You just don't go to the Barbary Coast. You make arrangements. I've made mine. And I hope it'll save Hey Boy's life. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Come in, hey boy. The door's unlocked. It's not hey boy, Mr. Paladin. Oh, Miss Wong, good morning. Come in. Good morning. I bring paper and coffee. Thank you, Miss Wong. Why didn't Hey Boy bring them up? Hey Boy, no, come to work this morning. What? Hey Boy, no, come to work this morning. It's Miss Wong's fault. We had a big argument last night. You mean he didn't come to work just because you had an argument? Maybe so. I don't know, Miss Apollo, that Miss Wong is very worried. Why don't you sit down and try to take hold of yourself? There. Now, do you want to tell me about it? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, boy. All time say he's going to marry Miss Wong someday. But he not so good. Mm-hmm. So last night, I tell him I wait no more. Oh. That I not want to see him again, ever. He was very angry. Walked away. Say nothing. Uh-huh. This morning I see his uncle, and he says that hey boy not come home last night. Oh, Mr. Pollard and I very worried. Maybe something happened to him. No, I wouldn't fret about it, Miss Wong. I'm sure he's all right. Oh, hey boy, very angry. I'll go talk to his uncle. Maybe he's heard from him by now. You find him, Mr. Polydor. Please? I'll try, Miss Wong. My first stop in the dingy labyrinth of Chinatown was a curio shop owned by Hayboy's uncle. He was visibly upset and had no further word from his nephew. I promised him that I would do everything I could to find him. There was one man in Chinatown who might have the answer, Chung Wu. For want of a better description, he was called the mayor of Chinatown, but he was much more than that. Head of the House of Chung in America, related through marriage to the Wang, Chang, and Fong families, president of the An Liang Town. And just to keep his hand in, he ran the biggest Pantan parlor east of Canton. He was very important and very difficult to see. No, no. The Honorable Chung Wu is not in. He is never out. He sees no one. You'll see me. Keep your hand away from that panel. And you keep your hand away from that knife. How? How did you know? I've been here before. You must be new. You will put me to death by a thousand torture. Who visits this humble establishment? Tis I, Chung. Paladin. Ah, Paladin. My friend. That's a mighty devoted watchdog you have there, Chung. You must forgive him, my friend. He is new. But to him, all Americans look alike. <laughs> they do. Well, don't be hard on him. He was just doing his job. Yes. Well, uh, come in, Paladin. Come in. Thank you. Well, my friend, it is too long a time since you have graced these unworthy walls with your presence. Much too long. May the oversight find forgiveness in your honorable heart. My heart is too full of pleasure at seeing you once more to harbor an unkind thought. It quickens to know the reason for your visit. I seek word of the boy who serves me at the hotel. Ah, yes. Kim Chung, the one you call Pei Boy? The very one. Why do you seek word of him here? 
He's disappeared. I fear he's in trouble. If he were in trouble, I would have heard. Uh, I thought perhaps he might be in your establishment playing fantan. Not that boy. Sometime I think he is not a true Chinese. He cares nothing for gambling. He thinks only of saving his money so that he can get married to this Miss Wong at your hotel. But that's why he disappeared after she asked him when he intended to marry her. Foolish girl. She has not yet learned how to hide the things when she manipulates her mannequin. Yeah. Well, if you were a Chinese boy and had a fight with your girl, where would you go? If he were angry enough, our Inca pay would not have been strong enough for him. You mean he went out and got drunk? He might have. But if he did, he did not do it here. Where then? If I were an angry Chinese boy who did not care for gambling and wanted to get really drunk, I might end up in the Barbary Coast. The Barbary Coast, that mean and ratty conglomeration of sheds and shanties, purveying entertainment and refreshment to sailors whose appetites are stranger than their tastes. Now, you just didn't go to the Barbary Coast. You made arrangements, and I made mine at the hack line in Portsmouth Square. Cab, sir. Oh, this way, sir. Cab, sir. Ah, there you are, Harry. Mr. Pellet. I was hoping I'd find you free. Yes, sir. Larry the act at your service. Will and Hager and able to do your bidding. Where will it be, Mr. Paladin? Harry, I want to find Ma Gertie. Ma Gertie? Huh. Why, she's been lying low since the vigilantes closed her up last time. It won't be easy, Mr. Paladin. But, uh, it won't be impossible. Hmm? Well, the sound of them cartwheels is making it easier every minute. And shall we go? Yes, sir. Step right in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. We made the rounds of North Beach, stopping at a half dozen places before Harry the Hack found the right one. It was a saloon built out over the water on a pier it was called the Golden Fleece. I had a drink at the bar while Harry made arrangements. She's here, all right. Oh, where? In the back room. Said she'd see you. She's white. Thanks, Harry. Oh. Hmm. Well, Paladin, come in. Come in. Thanks. So, how have you been, Ma? Paladin, I'd like it better if you called me Gertie. All right, Gertie. Sit down. <laughs> Still as handsome as ever, huh? You hear the vigilantes have been giving you a bad time. Ah, the vigilantes, why can't they leave an old woman alone? Because if they did, that old woman would be running the city in two weeks. So all I ask is to earn a living? Yeah, I weep for you, Gertie. That what you came here for? To cry over me? No. I'm looking for a Chinese boy. Now what makes you think he might be here? Well, missing persons have a way of passing through your hands, Gertie. You talk pure nonsense, Paladin. Yeah, that may be, but I... What are you doing? What's this? Where'd you get this black silk coolie hat? What coolie hat? Stuffed behind this sofa pillow like someone was trying to hide it. Well, now, Paladin, why'd anyone want to hide a thing like that? I don't even know why a respectable lady like you would have a thing like this in her parlor. Unless it was dropped by his owner while he was being lowered unconscious through that trap door over there to a boat below. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, where is he, Gertie? Where's who? The owner of this cap. Now, how would I? This is Hay Boy's cap. I've never heard of any Hay Boy. Now, where is he, Ma? You wouldn't harm me, Paladin. If I had to. Don't threaten me. Where is he, Ma? All right. I heard the Arabella Bishop was short some men. Arabella Bishop? The same. Clyde side clipper bound east for Liverpool around the horn. Did you sell hay boy to the Arabella Bishop? <laughs> yeah, it's too late, Paladin. What do you mean? Look out the window. What? The Arabella Bishop's weighed anchor, Paladin. <laughs> She's already sailed. <laughs> A 
Hey, boy was shanghaied aboard the Arabella Bishop, and she was too far out in the bay for me to do anything about it. But if I couldn't intercept her by water, I could try to cut her off by land. Well, yes, Mr. Paladin, I can beat it to the Presidio. All right, Harry, let's go. Here, pal. Here. What are you figuring on doing, Mr. Paladin? Get that boy off the Arabella Bishop. Now, that tubs the sail. There's a way. You know who's master of the Arabella? No. Captain Ford. And I mean a cutthroat ain't been born to sail the seas. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. He ain't going to give up no crew in to you without a fight. <laughs> I think he will. And gladly. Yeah, keep trying, Nellie. Sorry, I can't push old Nellie any faster, Mr. Pellet. That's all right. Once we get over Russian Hill, we'll coast all the way out to the Presidio. And then what? I have friends in the Army, Harry. Yes, but for what you're aiming to do, you ought to have friends in the Navy. Look back there. Yes? You see, the Arabella Bishop, just beyond Yerba Buena, she's in iron. No wind. Now, look out towards the Golden Gate. Bob coming in. Exactly. By the time the Arabella Bishop gets out to the gate on the tide... We'll be waiting for her in the fog. We'll be waiting? Now, Harry, you're not going to abandon me, are you? No, no, only, um, how are we going to get out there? Walk? One thing at a time, my good Harry. Now, now that we're over the hump of Russian Hill, let's make all speed to the army sutler on the Presidio. <laughs> Cutler on an army post. A good man to know. Not only does he control the supplies, but he also has more restricted information than the commanding officer. And John Harrington, settler at the Presidio, was the best west of the Rockies. Captain Paladin! Hello, John. How are they treating you? Oh, fine, fine. What brings you out here on this wet, misty afternoon? I thought we might go fishing, my friend and I. Fishing in this muck? Mm-hmm. You won't be able to see your hand in front of your face by nightfall. All the better for the kind of fish we're after. Oh. John, when I was stationed out here, there was always a small sailboat or two moored in that little cove to the lure to Fort Point. That's right. There's a couple out there now. Is a cat boat? No, it's too small. A cutter? Yeah, that's more businesslike. I don't suppose anybody will be using them this afternoon. In this weather? Do you have a yellow flag somewhere? A quarantine flag, eh? Yeah? Exactly. You think so? Good. I'd like to borrow it. And a bird G for the mainmast to look official. All this for a fishing trip? That's right. What do you expect me to catch? Well, why don't you close up the store and come along and see? I think I will. This looks like something the man shouldn't miss. <laughs> Company guidons flying from the main and mizzen peaks and the yellow quarantine flag flapping at the main truck. The little pleasure cutter Daphne looked official enough to fool anyone in the late afternoon in a heavy fog. And that's just the way it was when we finally pushed off into the Golden Gate. We didn't have too much trouble finding the Arabella Bishop. She was picking her way down the bay like a lonely cat. Arabella Bishop, ahoy! Ahoy! Who are you? U.S. Army Cutter Daphne. Heave to and prepare to be boarded. What is your business? Official inspection. We got nothing to inspect. We're carrying ballast, and we ain't about to heave two less than a mile from the open sea. Sorry, Captain. Orders are orders. Uh -huh. Well, your paper seems to be in order, Captain Ford. Of course, they're in order. I don't understand what all this tomfoolery is oh, about. Oh, by the way, I don't see any Chinese listed in your ship's roster. That's right. No Chinese on your crew? No. No Chinese cook, nothing like that? No. Huh. 
That's strange. You received information that you had a Chinese aboard. Well, your informers were mistaken. Well, I'm glad of that for your sake, Captain. This Chinese is supposed to be suffering from the uh, bubonic plague. The plague? Yes. Our orders were to take him ashore and put him in quarantine. But, of course, since he's not aboard... Oh, wait a minute. Just a minute. Who? Hi, sir. Those passengers. Passengers, sir? Oh, you numbskull. Those passengers you took aboard last night. Oh, them passengers. Yes. Was there a Chinese among them? Well, it seems to me the was, sir. Well, break him out. Bring him on deck. You better bring the other passengers, too. Now, look here. You heard me, Bozen. Hi, sir. Passengers, huh? Ma Gertie said you were short-handed before you sailed. But she's the informer. She gets hers from both ends, huh? No, Captain. She was the sole discretion. Protecting the good name of her clients until the very end. She arrested again? No. The end in this case was when I discovered a Chinese coolie cap under her sofa pillow. Now, really, Captain, your strong arm boy should be more careful of the customer's personal property. All right. Uh, Get out of there, all there right. we are. Three, four, five. Well, you must have been short, Captain Ford. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Why, did he say Paladin? Why are you not the U.S. Army? Boosters. I said, not hands. Don't you move, Captain Ford. You can see my friends and I have you well covered. John. Yes, Paladin? Get Hayboy over the side and aboard the Daphne. Oh, uh, maybe so. I help you here, Mr. Paladin. Yeah, you've given me enough trouble already, Hayboy. Oh, Hayboy, I want to give trouble. So I'll just walk down here. Oh, and, and I... Harry, Hayboy. So oh, you talk. Man, you can tell us all about it later on. Now, the rest of you passengers, this is the last call. All ashore that's going ashore. Now, hey, wait a minute, Paladin. I, I paid good money for those men. Then I suggest you get a refund from Ma Gertie. Tell her the merchandise was spoiled. Hey, Paladin. What? That Chinese boy. Does he really have the plague? I don't know, Forge. If you're still alive when you reach Liverpool, I think you can assume that he didn't. Mr. Paladin, I was not mad at home. Huh? Hey, boy, in matters of this sort, I don't feel it's disloyalty to the weaker sex to uh, uh, stretch the truth. Now, Miss Wong feels that it was her fault that you disappeared. Now, well, I was not mad at her. I just walked yeah. down by baseball for yeah. fresh air and uh, someone hit me on head. Yes, we know that, hey, boy, but there's no harm in letting her think you were angry with her. Uh, see, you must be firm, hey, boy. Now, remember. Yes, sir. All right. Come in. Hey, boy. Where is Wong? What happened to you? Where did you go? Mr. Wong, so worried about oh, you. Oh, Miss Wong. Yes, sir. The hay boy was Shanghai. Shanghai? Yes. Hey, boy, it serves you right. Oh. What are you going to Bobby Coast for? Maybe you get drunk and make you wrong. Stay in your car and I say, hey, boy, you have no consideration for a tiny girl. Oh, why I ever listen to Please you? Please apologize. Uh, yes, hey, boy. Uh, you Maybe think maybe so you can know, catch up with uh, Arabella I Bishop? I think you put up <laughs> Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Parrott and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by William N. Robson. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, Tim Graham, Charles Lung, and Virginia Christine. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Have Gun, Will Travel is brought to you through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Mm-hmm.